Welcome to On The Spectrum. I'm your host, Terry Matthews, and this is the show where we inform you, entertain you, and yes, educate you about all things autism. We like to call it Prescription TV. Joining me today is our special guest on Let's Talk, attorney Michael Gearing, who's gonna be talking about special education and that word we all want to understand in the autism community, litigation. <laughs> So thank you so much, Michael, for being here. You're a great friend of us um, here at On The Spectrum. And I'm going to, I have a few questions a day and I want you to take your time and share with families because litigation is a big word. And I think there's a lot of processes that happen before you get to litigation. Absolutely. Am I right about that? Yes. And those, those processes are, are probably more important than the litigation itself. So when a family is entering litigation, which I'm sure you've seen, especially yes. in the space of special education, typically what happens before that, before you actually end up in litigation? Well, usually it, it involves an impasse between the family of a, of a student with a disability, such as autism, and the school district. Okay. There's, a, there's a disagreement about a program or a placement. The, the family wants a specific program or placement. The school district doesn't want, want to provide that. Mm -hmm. um, and a decision has to be made. So, and when you say a decision has to be made, who has to make the decision? The, ultimately, it's, it's theoretically the IEP team who makes the decision, but generally when it's something that the family wants and is being refused, it's the school district who's calling the shots. And they have to issue what's called a notice of recommended educational placement. It's called different things in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, in Pennsylvania, it's, it, that's what it's called, and we refer to it as a NORAP and the school district has to say, this is the decision we're making, this is the reason we're making it, do you agree or disagree? And once you disagree, uh, the, the family will sign saying they disagree, can state the reasons why, and that really starts the process. So let me stop and say this, because a lot of times we have a lot of families that say, hey, I have this situation that's going on, I wanna sue the school. That's not actually where you start, or they feel like their child's been treated wrong, or they haven't received the right services. What I hear you saying is you try to work it out first, right? Before you even move to litigation. Absolutely, and that starts from the very first interactions with the school district in these cases. Um, if you take a combative attitude with the school district, they're not gonna wanna help you. Uh, things move slowly, <laughs> no. you burn bridges. Uh, rather than be a family and a, with a student who they want to you know, maybe put a little extra effort to give that student what he or she needs, they hold back. Um, so you want to be, from the very beginning, collaborative, respectful, um, and work with the people at the school district as much as you possibly can. So collaborative, respectful, and, and work with the school district. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out and sue somebody right away just because you might feel like your child's been done wrong. Exactly. I mean, you, you want to listen to the school district's perspective. Uh, at the same time, you want to be a forceful advocate for your child. Um, and you want to work through it and see if you can reach a resolution that everyone can live with. Now, let me help our, our viewers out there understand this. Litigation just doesn't happen within uh, a child within a school district setting. Sometimes a special needs child, could there be litigation for other reasons? Maybe a, a, a restaurant situation, activities or amusement park where that child who has special needs um, wasn't serviced appropriately. Absolutely, there are, there are federal anti-discrimination statutes involved IDA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, uh, which is the one most applicable to schools, mm -hmm. um, that's one where there's a lot of litigation. But there are others as well, including the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, uh, Section 504 of that, of that statute, the Americans with Disabilities Act. These are all statutes that are designed to prevent public and sometimes private entities from discriminating against individuals, including students, young children, uh, because of their disabilities. So there, there is litigation under those statutes as well outside the school setting. You can also use those statutes within the school settings as well. So help me understand this because we get this question a lot as well. You know, a lot of our viewers don't know when is it the most appropriate time to engage a lawyer, right? And, um, or maybe they try to collaborate, be respectful, work with the school district and they still haven't gotten anywhere. So now it's time for them to hire an attorney. Um, does this cost families a lot of money? Because sometimes they're so fearful about, like, I don't have the money to hire an attorney. How does that all work? Sure. Well, the good news about IDA is has a, what, a feature called uh, fee shifting, meaning if a family brings a due process complaint 
against a school district and prevails, mm -hmm. meaning gets some portion of what they're looking for, they are eligible to get uh, their attorney's fees paid for by the school district. Wow. So That's you have a big to, win for families. Absolutely. You have to win, but it doesn't mean you have to win completely. So it should give some comfort to families that at the end of the day, this may not bankrupt us. And some law firms are willing to take cases on a contingency basis. If it's a good case, they think at the end of the day, they're going to get their fees paid by the school district. Okay. So sometimes in, in some situations, you don't have to pay anything at all. If you have to pay on an hourly basis, it can get expensive. But on the other hand, know that at the end of the day, there is a possibility of getting all or some of those fees uh, back. Well, you know what's important, too, I think that most of our families need to understand because we have the luxury of knowing you, Michael, and your team, but not all families do. And I think their challenge is, where do they start with what kind of attorney? Can any attorney litigate these kind of cases, or would you recommend special education attorneys? I would recommend special education attorneys. It's, it's, it's litigation, and there's a lot of uh, commonalities in, in different types of litigation, but this is a very specialized field. Okay. Uh, it helps to know the law. It helps to know what due process proceedings look like. It helps to know the, the decision makers in, in Pennsylvania, their um, hearing officers who hear these cases. It's good to know the attorneys on the other side because that helps uh, in terms of negotiation of, of um, settlements short of due process. So if a family is in a situation where they feel like their child has been wronged or they're not getting their needs met by the school district, um, what, give me kind of your thoughts as a lawyer, what would you expect for them to do first before they even call your office? Well, you, you want to know that you're at, a, you're at a point where you think litigation may be the next step. Okay. At, at the same time, you, you want to be preparing for litigation all along in the back of your minds by, again, like I said, being respectful. You want to document your, all your interactions with the school district in some way. Uh, just so nobody at the end of the day can say, well, you said that you were going to provide this service and it wasn't provided, and they say, oh, no, well, that, that was actually, never actually said. If everything's documented in emails in a respectful fashion, um, emails or through some other means, then you've, you've basically set the record that a hearing officer is going to look at later um, in terms of, you know, this is what actually happened. So these are things that you want to do whether you're going to go to litigation or not. You just want to be respectful, collaborative, and document everything. At a certain point, you may realize we're, the school district is not backing down from this, and I mean you need to consult an attorney. There are certain situations, such as private school tuition cases, mm -hmm. and IDA allows parents to get um, tuition paid for at private schools under certain circumstances. But there are some procedural pitfalls involved in that um, and some strategic uh, inquiries in, as well. And that's the kind of case where you want to get a lawyer involved sooner rather than later because you have to set yourself up for later down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time it's going to be just there's an impasse, they're butting heads, and now it's time to bring an attorney in to try to either settle the case, and most of the cases do settle, or go to due process if that becomes necessary. Well, and let me hold you right there since we're talking about settling, because I think sometimes when attorneys are involved, everybody thinks that it's a payday, right? So just for clarity, this isn't always about pay. It, sometimes this is just about making sure that the child gets the education and the quality of education and the services that they deserve to receive. It's not necessarily they're going to be paid, correct? A absolutely. And, and you, there are never really monetary awards in these cases. Uh, the, the, the common... Um, relief that is provided is what's called compensatory education, which is hours or sometimes um, a fund of money for services, but they can only be used for educational services. No one's going to write you a check for $50,000 you can go off and buy a car with. That's one of the forms of relief available, private school tuition, like I said. But one of the most common things that families are looking for is help in putting together a good IEP for a student going forward. Comp compensatory education is for past um, failures to provide a free appropriate public education under IDA. But you also want to make sure your, your student has the, the best program going forward. And, okay. and attorneys can help in that as well. And this is my last question just for our viewers out there. 
tell me this because I want to set right expectations. Oftentimes, once we hire an attorney, um, when families are involved in this process and they're kind of waiting, especially let's say, you know, I am um, fighting to get my child to transfer one, from one school district to another or education paid for. Um, sometimes we can lose our patience and rightfully so. We're trying to get our kid the best quality of education and we want things to move fast. What are the expectations that should be set for parents? Like, you know, what's a, a good amount of time? Is these cases, do like car accident cases, they can go on for years. Is this the same or is it different? It is different. There are, there are time limits involved that make these cases go quicker than ordinary lawsuits. Okay. For one thing, you're not going in front of a judge, mm -hmm. at least initially. You're going in front of a hearing officer or an administrative law judge. It's a more informal procedure. It happens relatively quickly. When the due process complaint is filed, and that's what triggers the litigation, uh, there are timelines involved where you have to go through a mediation session to try to work it out. And then after that, you could, you could see yourself in a hearing within several months. Now that's good news for our parents out there. Thank you so much. I mean, this is all invaluable information. I think a lot of times we were just so concerned about the whole litigation process and when to get attorney involved. So I'm really hoping that this is going to help our viewers. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you for having me, Terry. I appreciate it. So we hope during this segment of Let's Talk, we've given you some useful, valuable information. And for more segments like this, please check us out at www.onthespectrum.tv. And don't miss our show by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us and see you next time on The Spectrum.